There we are, we're back. Back in black, I hit the sack. So, as promised, part two, I've split it up into two parts, just uh, to make the editing easier. Well, yeah, no editing. Um, and as you can see, we are very near the top of drop, which is marked by the uh, Little down white arrow. Um, we had a bit of Langen radar going over Germany, and uh, apart from that, it's been all very quiet on the um, air traffic control. Uh, been on Unicom. The only aircraft to worry about is this Jet 2 up here, uh, Shanex 49 Bravo Charlie. Um, to the 662, that Trouble 7 that uh, we followed out of Heathrow has literally just landed. Uh, so he's down. We should be about 10 minutes ahead of this Shanex. Um, so we're ready to rock and ruin. Now then, let's have a look at the charts and uh, see what we're going to be doing. Uh, 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 that button. There we go. Lovely. So there we are. You can see where we are coming up uh, towards Cyprus now. So our last waypoint uh, on the flight plan is uh, Bonek, Bonek, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, so we're going to be on the Bonek 1 Romeo, uh, which is an Arnav arrival. Um, and we're going to follow that in to Adlus. Um, we're not going to go all the way to Atesta and all the way down into the Larnaca VOR. Uh, we'll break off at Adlus where we'll go on to the Arnav to visual because they're currently actually on runway 22 um, rather than 04 the other way um, which they would normally be operating on so we've got no ILS or anything this way there is a localizer for a VOR but, but it's going to be beautiful we'll go visual so there's Atlas there uh, so we swing a left effectively almost due east um swing it up ever so slightly north this is all our nav um to our faf our final approach fix here and then we swing into a visual approach for runway 22 uh, and there's what we need to do if we're doing a go around or a missed approach or something like that when we land so we're coming in on 22 uh, and we'll come off hopefully at the high speed exit here uh, if not, we'll come off at Golf or Hotel. Um, and then we're probably going to park at Apron 1. Um, looks like Apron 2 is more for local uh, aviation clubs and so on and so forth. So I think Apron 1, that's certainly the, the main entrance to the air, airport. Um, so I, I think this is the main terminal um, by sort of looking at that. So let us kill that button and let's get those things I just said keyed in to the machine. So there's Bonek, that's our last uh, waypoint. So if we click on uh, Larnaca here and go to Arrival, uh, and we're going to pick up the Arnav 22 for visual. And we're on the Bonek 1 Romeo. And we're going via Adlers. So we can key that in. So if I flick to plan on here, and we'll have to zoom in a smidge. Now I can scroll through these. So there's Adlers. In fact, oh, it's done all the things for us. I thought I was going to have to delete a couple of waypoints, but it turns out not. Swings us round, and it's got all the correct speeds, uh, altitude constraints, and the like. So that's good. We can also key in our arrival weather so because there's no ATC on we've got no ATIS so I'm just going to pull this straight from the current world weather uh, so temperature is currently 20, a lovely 20 degrees UNH is 1015 1015 wind 286 at 8 286 8 knots transition is what 9,000 feet because uh, basically overfly a stonking great big mountain um, so our V approach yeah we'll add 5 onto that so 
usual thing, 147. Um, and our minimums are... Is it actually 1,600 feet? It is. Why is this? Uh, so that's going to be 1,600 feet uh, barrow. So that's on there like that. Um, we've been pretty much at our optimum for the whole flight, which is good. So um, the prediction of not requiring a step climb was reasonably accurate. I'm going to stick the marker there. No, because we're approaching over C, so I'm not even sure if there is a marker. Um, and there's nothing to do up here, actually. So that's us actually all keyed in. Um, we can flick back to normal nav mode for the display. And we're very close, actually, to our um, top of drop. What's that? 20 miles. So we'll chew that up pretty uh, pretty quick. Uh, doing what we're doing. Mac decimal 765. Um, we've got a nice 31 knot tailwind there. Which is good. Giving us a, a pretty decent ground speed of 467 knots. Uh, and our true airspeed there showing lower. Obviously because we are uh, quite high up. So the air is thinner. So that's all in 1015, that's what I've got to remember. Um, let us sort your map out. Unfortunately, I can't change the text size on here. Well, I say that. Oh, no, I can. I can! I'm lying to you. Let's make it size 18 for one. Of a better number. It's currently size 12, so it should be. Let's see if this actually does anything. Uh, for all of those, apply, click. Yeah, I could uh, I could go a lot higher than that even. Oh, it's an improvement. Anyway, it's an improvement. I'll um, muck about with that another time because if I go if I go too large. Yeah, when we zoom out, it just starts looking like utter garbage. Um, so that's probably the best we're going to get. Unfortunately, you can't uh, do a dynamic zoom. So as you zoom in, the text size changes. It's um, big size. Bless you, COVID. So yeah, we are all ready to rock and ruin. Huge lag spike, thank you. Um... Yeah, we're not going to need that, are we? And here is Cyprus in front of us. And actually, Larnaca is more or less bang on the nose over here on the on the far side of the island. So here we are coming up to top of drop. Uh, and what are we going down to? 6,000 initially. So there we are. Dot speed, uh, dot altitude, like we sort of mentioned in the um, in the previous video. So I've cleared the aircraft to descend at will, not below six thousand feet. Um, so it'll work out your descent, follow any constraints that that are on the flight plan, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to flick the weather the terrain on. We'll put tilt below, although I think we are. Well clear of uh, that Shanex. Yeah, we are. Um, so we we should be uh, we should be absolutely golden. Uh, let me bring the mic. Try not to bang it. There we go. So there's the mic. Uh, and we might as well zoom in on that actually. So it's all going to be reasonably uneventful until we turn that base leg, like we saw. And um, and then we're visual, of course, so there'll be no autopilot for the actual uh, final approach and touchdown. That will all be me. But thankfully the winds aren't too bad. Um, and although we're in a 321, so it's the biggest of the, the four, really. Um, 
it's very forgiving to fly this thing is very very easy to fly definitely uh, highly recommend if you you're just getting into flight simming or something like that uh, you know starting with the airbus is nice and easy um the fly by wire and the, the flight computer and everything is very very easy to drive um making it you know a joy a joy to fly and you can focus on the other things so if you're getting into VAT sim and stuff like that you have a little bit more time to think um, and you're not smashing buttons and having to click everything and the dark cockpit makes things very very easy so what, what I mean by dark cockpit uh, is basically in the Airbus uh, and in the very newer Boeing such as the uh, Dreamliner the 78 um, the standard is for lights to be off in the old older aircraft and the older Boeings, um, then lights would be on. So if we turn something on, then a light would come on like that to show it's on. The problem with that being it's very, very easy to miss something. So actually in the Airbus, they do it the opposite. If something isn't on, and it should be, or is on, and it shouldn't be, you know, whatever. If something is wrong... Or potentially wrong then the light is on if there are no lights on then it means everything is fine set up correctly and you don't have to worry so it actually means it makes it very very easy to spot then if you've forgotten something or got something wrong because a light will be on uh, what I press there is for a flat 3 landing for example you, you would want to know about that if you have that enabled uh, so yeah makes it nice and easy to fly doing holds and stuff are very very easy in the, uh, in these airbuses um, and stuff like that so if you you get caught out and air traffic ask you to hold it's you know everyone starts flapping uh, but in the airbus it's actually quite easy to punch what you're doing into the flight computer um, personally I find it easier than the Boeing um, you can of course do it manually but yeah Good, good one to start off and it's not too too expensive either and you get you get a lot of a lot of plane for your money it's not 100 percent the same as real world um but it's not not like the fs labs a320 for example that's much closer to real world but it's a single aircraft um as a result it's harder to fly obviously so this is a nice little middle ground between your your default aircraft and your your proper hardcore doing it right and simulating uh, type jobby. So you can see there the flight time, bear in mind I started the clock just a couple of minutes late, uh, is around about 3 hours 50 minutes if we just add on those few minutes for when I forgot to turn it, turn the stopwatch on. Uh, so that's down here. So we're actually well ahead of time, this tailwind has uh, certainly helped us quite significantly. Uh, I think it was planned as a five hour flight or there or thereabouts uh, I'll tell you what I can actually find out let's have a look at PFPX what did that reckon because um, this will take into account wind there's air time four hours forty oh sorry no wrong three hours fifty eight air time Oh, so actually, it's not going to be a million miles off there at all. Why did BA Virtual think it was going to be five hours? Anyway, that's still a quarter of an hour quicker uh, than what you would expect. You'd expect four hours 13. Um, and yeah, we're, we're going to be in pretty much within four hours, which would be nice. So down we go. The main thing to keep an eye on when we're descending. Uh, so that pink dot there is where the aircraft wants us to be in terms of our altitude on the right hand side. So we're pretty much bang on profile. That's good. And then on the left side we've got this bracket. The aircraft wants us to be at this diamond here. Or this triangle should I say. That's where it would be ideal. But as long as we're in this bracket all things are good. If we start going a bit too fast, then we'll have to put out the air brakes. If we go start going too slow, then it will just spool up the engines and adjust our flight profile. Um, 
our descent profile, sorry, to uh, to sort the speed out. Um, yeah, at the moment we are slowly increasing. It will rework it. We might we might be all right. So you can see, even though I've keyed in six thousand feet, cleared the aircraft down to six thousand. We actually look here. It says flight level one one zero because we've got an altitude restriction on the uh, star on the standard terminal arrival route, uh, which is flight level one ten, and then here we're down to uh, an altitude of nine thousand feet. So even though I've said 6,000 because we're on that dot, um, it's managed um, and it will take account of any restrictions we've got. So down we go, just keeping an eye on that spy for this uh, other chappy, but it looks like we're all golden. Oh. So we can actually... Um, do a bit of prep nice and early here. Um, oh, how long is the runway? Three kilometers. So we should get away with auto brake low. Quite happily get away with auto brake low, actually. Um, so that's auto brake low. We'll do all of the other bits and bobs for the checklist when we get down a bit more. And when we punch through flight level 100, we'll uh, turn the lights on. So actually, not a lot to be done. Uh, and we'll flick the landing system on. Uh, in fact, no, we won't because there's no point. We haven't got a landing system. And we'll be visual. I, I could key in the Larnaca VOR and all the rest of it. Um, but we're going to be visual, so I'm not going to bother. Um, the weather is, is good at Larnaca, according to the docks, uh, uh, according to the charts, weather charts. So here we are, just coming up to Bonnick, which was the last waypoint on our flight plan. So once we uh, cross Bonnick, we're actually on the STAR, Standard Terminal Arrival Route. And then we're actually in Larnaca airspace, as it were. But we don't have air traffic on, so nothing to worry about too much there. And Larnaca's pretty... M <coughs> Excuse me. Larnaca's pretty much on the nose, actually. In fact, it is on the nose. We're on a 105 radial at the moment, straight into Larnaca. So you see the speed. That's that's the main thing I'm watching. Making sure this is somewhere in the middle. If it was really high up, it means we're too low. If it's really uh, down low, it means we're too high. Uh, but the speed. We're fast, but we're in the bracket, so if we're in the bracket, we're fine. Now you can see, because we passed Bo uh, Bonek, that altitude restriction's lifted, and now our altitude restriction is 9,000 feet. So here, it's actually saying flight level 90, because we're still on standard pressure, so that makes it a flight level. Uh, but we will flick over to local Q&H. In fact, since our traffic's not on, I'm going to flick over to local Q&H now, which is 1015. And we'll zoom in a smidge more on the map. There we go. Lovely. So yeah, 6,000 feet have cleared us down to... I'll, I'll knock that all the way down to our final approach fix. Altitude fairly shortly. Oh, I'd love to be in Cyprus now. Mind you, it's not that much warmer. How far away is the Shanex? He's still well. He's, yeah, he's not even close to the island yet, so... Yeah, it's not even rendered in, so it's all, all good there for spacing and whatnot. Although, 
it, it would be uh, the Shanex that would have to do space and we've got priority because we're ahead. And he's not called a pan or a low fuel or anything like that. So now you can see this bracket has changed. We're slightly fast, so it's calling for more drag. So I'm just going to put the speed brakes out a smidge. Spoilers, as they're actually called on this aircraft. You can see them up there. And I'll keep them out for as long as it is required, actually. And you can see the diamond, the, the, the ideal speed isn't necessarily in the middle of the bracket. Here it's actually quite high. Um, in fact, yeah, that's actually our 250 speed restriction. So I am going to pull out a speed intervene here. And that was a bit aggressive. So it's going like, to violently pull up. To bring that speed back and now you can see because we've done a speed intervention we lose the the pink um because we're now not following what the aircraft thinks we should be doing um we've intervened and said no no i want you to do this instead And uh, I must say, I do prefer on approach managing speed myself in the Airbus. It, it tends to come in a little, little bit hot, a little bit fast. Oh, there we go. See, I tend to like just nudging it off a little bit earlier. It just means you can get your flaps down and, and get fully configured a, a bit earlier. So we're coming up to Atlas. This is where we actually break off the RNAV procedure and go on to uh, the RNAV approach procedure rather than the arrival procedure. So this is where we swing easterly, more or less. Is that 084, something like that? Fair enough. Initially 085 and then 082, 079, yeah. But we're currently over the highest point that we fly over. And as you can see, clearance to the ground is uh, is very good. So nothing to worry about there. What I have forgotten though is I've forgotten to turn the lights on. So they can go on, they can go on. Larnaca itself is just sort of over there in a far edge of the city. It's pretty much on, on the... Oh, in fact, we can see it there. Look, there's the runway. So that obviously I forget that it's a better resolution on my screen than yours. So there you go. There's a bit more zoomage. So we're pretty much uh, sort of downwind-ish at the moment. Remember this is 321, so I've just got to be mindful that it's a slightly longer aircraft. Um, so just watch that tail strike. So we've got a maximum speed of 210 there. But I'm actually going to bring us back to 185, which is the next speed restriction anyway. And then 160 is... Our final approach uh, altitude. We're below the green dot now. Oh, below the green dot, so that means we can uh, knock out the slats. So that's stage one of flat. Uh, have we got any traffic to worry about? No, we do not.
Uh, and what I've already forgotten what our 147 was V approach. Okay. Huge lag spike, thank you. And I think it's just automatically done approach. Yes, it has. So it's uh, told the aircraft we want to be in the approach phase now. So we can pull the speed back a bit more. We're below the green line, so we can go flat two. And that'll just br help bring the nose down a bit. Funny old approach here. Yeah. We'll keep the speed at one sixty until sort of four DME ish. So here we are, turning base. Oh, shut up. <laughs> He's going to annoy me. He's going to keep calling that. Oh, no, we are descending. We're all right. Come on. So lights fully on. Barnica traffic, speedbird six six four, final runway two two six miles. Shouldn't really put your flaps down while you're in a turn, but I'm gonna. Uh, speed brakes are armed. And we have visual with the runway. So I'm gonna press the magic button. No, I'm not. One, four, seven there. Continue. I'm flat full. Nice and easy. Yeah, we'll just straighten up there. We've got a crosswind right to left, so we do want a slight nose right. You can just see on that arrow down there. Hope you can see that. This isn't a very One good approach. Thousand. Never mind. <coughs> Not a strong wind, seven knots, so. Stab at the controls a little bit more. Forgetting that's utterly pointless to do in any aircraft, particularly an Airbus. Be nice to get the uh, altitude sorted. Four hundred. Oh, there we go. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Seventy. What's happening to the? Fifty. 
Oh, I don't know what's happened to the textures here. I've got Paywale Arnica as well, and I checked it was installed properly and... Uh, Reverses away. Oh, that was a bit aggressive. Larnica traffic, runway 22 vacated, speedbird 664. So a poo can come on. Yeah, something's very balked with these textures. I have no idea what or why. Oh, it's very balked. Look where he is. That's the treble. Treble seven that was ahead of us. Some, something is not quite right. But good to see another speedy birdie. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's at least put fight and effort into uh, doing this correctly, shall we? Just thinking about it, because... Oh, we've actually got a docking system. Excellent. Stop there. Rightio. So then, right, what do we need to do? Parking brake can come on, then I can take my feet off the pedals. Uh, engines 1 and 2 can come off. Uh, beacon light can come off to indicate that we have shut the engines. Seatbelt sign can go away now. And we can disarm the doors. And speaking of doors, let's get some of them open. Cargo doors would normally be open by now. Guys on the ground would have been all over it. Uh, why is my jetway not working? Right, okay, right, well jetways aren't working then, so stuff you. But there we are, down on the ground at Larnaca. And um, how far away is this Shannex? Shall we watch that guy come in? Oh, he's still quite far away, so no. Right, hope you enjoyed. We'll do the return flight soon. Until then, ta-ta for now.